sound of a song that went something like Hello and welcome to France 24's weekly music show. I'm Marjorie Hash and my guests this week make music that straddles club and classical genres. They've been praised for replicating the DNA of dance music through classical instruments and are just as likely to play Berlin's mythical techno club Bergen as they are to perform with a 90-piece orchestra in Mexico. This coming June, they will be releasing a new album entitled Multi-Faith Prayer Room. It's my absolute pleasure to welcome Daniel Brandt, Jan Brauer and Paul to the France 24 studios. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, Thank you, you for inviting us. No? Thank you. Oh, well, congratulations. I got to get a sneak preview of your new record, and uh, it's a, definitely a bit of a more pop-tastic move uh, into this, in this car jar. Um, but I was also wondering, um, where are you taking us? What journey were you um, consciously going on? And tell me more about the title as well, which was very intriguing. Yeah, I mean, the, the title is actually based on a questionnaire. We made a questionnaire and sent it to about 500 people around the world, asking them about faith, future and rituals. Mm -hmm. And the recordings, the voice recordings of these answers are the basis of the whole album. And we kind of built a collage. And then every um, person we worked on this album with was answering these questions as well as Mickey Blanco. We just heard a little excerpt of that song. Mm -hmm. And so that's the basis of the song. So it's about bringing people together and creating a space, which can also be like a club, you know, where people are coming together, which is kind of uh, not connected to any form of religion. It's like a free space where everyone is welcome. Mm. And there's also like a, an absolute a hedonistic feel to it, you know, freedom, but also, um, I mean, is that a form of rebellion to not fit into any box or? Mm. I mean, for us it's also rather that we came from club music and dance music, that's how we started. Mm -hmm. In between, in the last 15 years, we wanted to incorporate a lot of different influences and now we are kind of, we wanted to make real club music again and just create euphoria that's able to bring people together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's this idea of Ethiopia as well in the, yeah. in the themes. Yes, yeah. rather than, I think we're a bit too old now to, to be rebels, but uh, it's still like the feeling that we want to uh, create is like still this f wild feeling from being on a rave for the first time and, and thinking everything is possible here and everybody understands what I think and without even t to talk to mm -hmm. other people, you know. Mm -hmm. You've also got some really cool uh, guests on this new record, Mickey Blanco, <coughs> uh, Azakel uh, Komai and Marina Herlop, and of course, Sophie Hunger. Here's the track you actually did with Sophie, this feeling. energetic video there um, how did you come up um, decide to work with some of the artists on this album you know from Mickey Blanco to Sophie Hunger uh, how did you pick them or did they pick you it was yeah well we picked them <laughs> but it was a very uh, long process actually we had a long list of people that we wanted to work with and basically uh, all of the ones we ended up working with are people that we always respected their art and we were always fans of them so it's actually a great joy to be able to have them all together on one record. Mm -hmm. And do you think bringing those sort of lyrics and did that give it the pop element that exactly. you didn't have on previous records yeah. maybe? Yeah. Um, also, um, I thought it was quite interesting was that you may have read the news, but famous uh, French electronic artist uh, Thomas Bangalter, who's one half of Daft Punk, has recently uh, quit electronic music and has made a, a classical music, a classical album, which is for a ballet uh, called Mythologies. And he says he was now rejecting kind of robots and he kind of doesn't want to be involved with that. Um, as mm. pioneers of you know electronic and you know classical music, was that a move that surprised you? I think it makes quite a lot of sense. I can understand it because this kind of robot aesthetic that Daft Punk, of course, made very big and they also were already inspired by, inspired by let's say, Devo or Kraftwerk. 
uh, at uh, like a few decades ago the um, yeah the, the, like technology was connotated in a more positive way i guess by now we're all a bit more scared so i can understand that and when we started we had a feeling like that as well that we i mean we obviously loved techno and also like synthesized music but we thought like we want to give it more human touch again because uh, the machines are useful but they shouldn't take over so. mm. and where do you stand yeah. on like uh, artificial intelligence i know people like nick uh, nick cave has been very vocal about being against it and that it couldn't replace uh, human feelings but people like mm. phil collins on the other hand think that if they improve the algorithms they will be able to replace musicians i think they will be able to replace everything mm. which is made by <laughs> humans you know by, by at the end of the day but it's but it's still the question if it's really bringing something valid and new to the table of it's just like m endlessly mixing up stuff that's been there mm -hmm. and i mean that's a bit of what humans do also mm -hmm. but um i think for artificial intelligence it will be still i think it's really overrated now but it can mm -hmm. be become really powerful in the future mm -hmm. but right now it's not very intelligent mm -hmm. i would say but also it can't be stopped, so we would rather no, be yeah. open to try out uh, many things mm -hmm. and try and see the dangers, because if you just lead it aside, you know, other people will do it. And But so far it, it just has a lot to do. It calculates probabilities in a very good way already, better than we can do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But um, so far, of course, we would like to emphasize the other things that humans can still do. Mm -hmm. But we are not against trying out all sorts of technologies. We use old things, new things, anything. Yeah. Oh, talking of new things, you've also, uh, on top of your album, uh, got an interactive installation which will feature 120 participants from 35 <coughs> countries. Can you tell us a bit more about this? It's already taken place, I think, in Florida? Yeah, it has taken yeah. place at the during the Art Basel in Miami, and uh, it is also based on this questionnaire that we sent out. So it's basically it's also called Multiface Prayer Room, and um, it's a 3D audio um, installation with lights, and you can basically immerse yourself in kind of a manifest of the future mm -hmm. of all these different voices talking about faith, future, and rituals. And um, so it's basically like a 3D walkthrough version of the album in mm -hmm. a way. Mm, well, hopefully we can bring it around the world. If you buy the album, you will find the, there's a little questionnaire inside, actually, on a sheet of paper. Mm. You can you can even pull it out now and show it. Ah, well, <laughs> there, there's an extra reason to, and, uh, to go through it. Yes. Hold on, we'll get this question. So if, if you buy the album, yeah. you will have the you will find the questionnaire inside, which you can then uh, fill out or record your your uh, answers and send them to us and. You will be incorporated in the future versions of the installation. That's quite exciting. Well, hopefully. Uh well, no, it sounds really good. <laughs> Talking of future, coming out this week, we've got a lot of uh, new releases. Metal legends Metallica are back with an 11th studio album entitled 72 Seasons as they gear up to tour the world's biggest stadiums. Mm. Let's check out the title track. Lots of speed metal vibes there on the new uh, Metallica. Uh, so would you guys who've worked with folk and pop and hip-hop artists ever consider us a, you know, a metal band like Metallica as a collaborator? Well, in general, yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, they probably wouldn't ask us, but uh, so far mm -hmm. we've worked with so many different people and uh, also like in choosing the collaborations for Multifaith Prayer Room, one of the main ideas obviously was to get like very different people with different perspectives and it showed also like that um, you know the answers for these three questions of our installation they are all so different because you can if you ask a very simple and personal and intimate um, question we just discovered there are just infinite you know an infinite amount of ways to answer that mm -hmm. and it's a very personal thing so yeah, Metallica, if you ask us, cool. Yeah, if you're watching last, <laughs> oh. <laughs> now over to an artist, I can imagine you guys working with quite easily, a Canadian indie pop folk singer, songwriter, Feist. She's back uh, this week with her sixth studio album, Multitudes, in which she explores the experience of grief after losing her father and that of becoming a new mother. Oh, 
And that was Borrowed Trouble, taken from Feist's album Multitudes. And this brings us to the end of this week's music show. Thank you so much to my guests, Brant, Bauer and Freak, for coming on the France 24 show. Remember, their new album is coming out on June the 2nd, and it's amazing. Uh, also, just a reminder that France 24 News is coming up in just a few minutes. Remember, you can follow our culture news on our website and our social media at Encore F24. We're going to leave you with uh, Dave Okumu, who is releasing an album called uh, Come, I Came From Love. In this, he explores the black experience, the heritage of slavery, and what it's like living in an unequal society, all of which he delivers with a beautiful, soulful voice. Uh, uh.